in the previous video we actually talked about the transfer function alright uh, this is the transfer function for g of s or in this case g of z or hz sorry is equals to hg z <laughs> and then ez you bring it up it become your your, your hz times your ez you have your output so your transfer function times your input will give us your output and we say that we're going to talk about what is the input and then how do we deal with this input all right so with relevance to your um this 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 for this this video over here i'll just follow this video and 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 do do with things all right in order to start all right you may wonder what is this easy all right this easy is similar to your laplace stuff all right if you still remember uh, so if you laplace domain a certain function all right using this mathematical um equation what you have can be written as y of s correct so likewise if it's in terms of a z domain right instead of having this this parameter over here that is dealing with the laplace we have something like this all right that is dealing with the z domain and we have um e z all right therefore this is easy over here all right y, y of s is in terms of f z z is in terms of z all right this is some recap that you have um um, maybe forgot right likewise we can also write this 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 yt instead of this y of s we can also write as a laplace of y of t telling us that we actually change having a laplace transform onto y of t and same thing over here we can also write in terms of z all right instead of um, the yt we can write as ek all right and that's it all right so these are the forms that you may need to know and what exactly is this this thing gonna deal with our inputs? Alright, just let's let you know how this actually ex extends. Alright, imagine I z transform a certain e k right over here. So if my k is equals to zero, this means that I'll have e naught z minus zero, which is zero. Alright, so this whole thing will become one. So I have just e naught over here, right? And therefore it's just this one. And therefore if k is equals to one, e one z minus one. Alright, because I'm just simply subbing in, I'll just write as 1. Alright, let's cancel this. And then I'll just write as minus 1 over here. And this whole thing, or this whole thing that I've written is over here. E1, you, you just check it out. So this, 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 this rest of it actually comes with it, right? Z minus 2, minus 3, whatever. It's all in terms of the case that you just submit. Alright, so, so you, you just sum all this stuff to infinity, from minus infinity to infinity. What you will have is your z transform of your particular function of k all right so far so good so therefore let's introduce you with the new concept of the, um, the input all right the first input that we're going to introduce you is the delta delta direct delta function or we can call this the impulse function all right for the laplace domain but the new name for this impulse is instead of calling it the impulse function they call it the unit impulse all right they call it the unit impulse or they can also call it the pulse Alright, and therefore, the direct delta function, if you still remember, when k is equal to 0, you have a spike of 1. Alright, other than k equals to negative plus minus 1 plus minus 2 to infinity, alright, they are all zeros on, on all the sides. Alright, if you still remember, so this is the direct delta function. And if I were to Laplace, I mean, sorry, <laughs> z transform, this is due over here. Alright, what we have is this. So instead of ek, I just simply write as the direct delta k all right maybe i should write as um ek all right something like that for for goodness sake all right so if k is equals to zero delta zero z minus zero is zero i'll have just simply on delta z minus zero is equals to one so one times delta zero is this one over here all right if k is equals to one all right we'll have um, delta 1 times z minus, alright, this is minus 1, and it's over here. It's the same explanation that I have. So, th as you can see, you can compare, these are all the same stuff. While the rest of the z minus 2, 3, etc., is, 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 is even, alright, it's, it's, it's kind of clear. Alright, I don't know what the hell am I talking. Yes, 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 yes. Yay. But we also know that when k, alright, when, when k, where, where am I? When k is equals to 0, alright, when k is equals to 0, our direct delta function is 1, right? So this is where we have uh, show you, right? When k is equals to 0, the, 
delta function is one, and therefore this is this is the term for k is equals to zero, right? So one plus the rest is zero, right? Straight away because you know that the rest are zeros, so you just simply write as one will do, right? So the the um the so the z transform of the delta k, all right, is actually uh, equals to one, all right, for the the pure k, all right. So normally we we write it as um delta k over here, all right. Because I just want to convey to you that this one is is the same thing as some functions of a uh, ek, all right. So I'll just simply put it over here. So the z of delta k is equals to one, all right. Next, all right. Instead of k is equals to zero, now we have a k is equals to two. Uh, when k is equals to two, we have a one over here, all right. So therefore, how do we express things, all right? In in order to to express things in terms of the because this 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 thing over here doesn't look nice, all right? Because as you can see, I'm um, sorry, this is not this is la the later part, all right? But anyway, <laughs> this is the k equals to zero. I want something that is expressed in terms of zero, because my k over here, my my this left hand side will gonna be sub in over here as some subscripts, all right? So I want something that is more efficient of of writing. So therefore, I just bring this over here. Alright, what I have is k minus two is equals to zero. Alright, so when k minus two is equals to zero, mean this means that when two is equals when k is equals to two, the whole thing becomes zero, and therefore impulse function of one over here. And this subscript over here can be written down here as delta k minus two. So if I were to z transform this delta k minus two, what do I have? Alright, so instead of writing k minus two over here, I just keep it as as this one first all right just the generic um, delta k first so the generic delta k if i were to sub in two in this case because this is just the, the the whole summation of the equations so if it's equals to two so when sigma i mean delta two is equals uh, multiplied by minus two right this thing over here reflects this all right and we know that when k is equals to two this this thing becomes one over here all right because actually this thing over here can be represented the same as k minus two, z minus, uh, maybe, k minus two. All right, it's the same thing. All right, but I just want to re-represent this over here as as a generic form. So later on you'll see what I mean. All right, just hang on to it. All right, this there is no confusion. It's just, uh, the the way of writing. So, since this is uh, because when 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 k is equals to two, the Dirac delta function is one. Alright, so 1 times z minus 2 is simply z minus 2. All the rest are all zeros because the direct data function can only allow one of the k to exist, right? So therefore, this is in terms of your, um, when z transform of your delta 2 all right, is equals to z minus 2. Alright, I can write this as k minus 2 is equals to z minus 2 wonder why I didn't I write k minus 2 over here and at a minus 2 right so this thing will become k plus 2 okay you may wonder why I didn't do that this thing will become minus k times minus 2 will become 2 plus k sorry so so this thing over here will become 2 plus k all right but I just want to prove to you that they are the same because when you sub in as 2 all right this will become 0 okay we should leave it like that first all right so when I sub in k is equals to 2 we'll have 2 minus 2 equals to 0 and z minus this is 2 minus 2 will become also 0 so this thing will become delta naught again so it's just this one only so that's why i just want, don't want to confuse you but just want to explain to you that these are how, how the notations works all right but in terms of trying to laplace domain things it's, it's, it's just the same thing all right but it's, it's, a, it's in a different way of expressing stuff but they are they are just the same all right just take it okay so this in this scenario when k is equals to zero you have one so when k is equals to two all right you have z minus two over here then if let's say i when k is equals to four we can actually easily easily generalize your stuff right so when k equals to four you will have k minus four is equals to z minus four all right it's just the same thing i'll not prove to you because i already proved to you for the z minus two case all right so if it's z minus n in this case all right um, k minus m, sorry. Now I'll just simply write as z minus m. Okay. Therefore, 
to summarize, if you have a certain Z transform of a certain impulse um, input, all right, you have equals to one. If you Z transform a certain impulse with a certain shifting, uh, because you actually shift from from um, from this this origin over here, you actually shift to maybe two, all right, which is our next example. So this one actually becomes um, zero, while the new shift becomes here, and this is actually k minus two equals to zero. So that's something when k is equal to two then it's simply um, zero down star. This is the first step to, to, to doing your um, so-called the Z table, if you still remember. Your, if you remember your Laplace table, right, when, for example, if you still remember your Laplace table when, when T is equals to um, a certain direct delta function, all right, and then eventually the, in, the, in the Laplace domain is equals to one, all right, and then if T equals to maybe one, then the Laplace is actually equals to 1 over s, something like that, alright? So this is the same thing now, we are starting to plot out the table for the z table instead of the Laplace table, and this is the first step to, to doing that, alright? And before I go, I just want to prove to you certain stuff for the k minus 2 case, alright? Because I, I feel that I need to prove to you something, alright? So for example, just now we say that when I sub in k minus 2 in this case, if I will trans, um, I'm so called the, um, Z transform our, our delta k minus 2, alright, so we will have delta 0 and Z minus 0, alright, so everything will become delta 0, alright, and delta 0 means that it's equals to 1, right, because, um, because when k minus 2 is equals to 0, delta is equals to 1, so therefore when 2 minus 2 is equals to 0, delta is equals to 1, and this is why, um, this thing over here is 1, then 1 plus 0, 0, 0, 0 is still 1. So we can also say that delta k minus 2, alright, z transform is equals to 1, something like that, right? No, no matter how many times you transform the big k minus m, you still get 1. That's just the meaning of that. But because since we know that this is equals to this one, no matter what, what type of k you sub in, you'll get this one is equals to this one. Alright, so therefore, when I sub in <coughs> my my k equals to two over here, right? In our general equation, right? If I were to just go into here, <coughs> since that we know that z um delta two is equals to z um delta k minus two, okay? We have this proof to you already, right? Since with this logic at the axis, we can actually sub in k is equals to two over here because they are actually the same same stuff they will derive the same thing. But once we sub in k is equals to 2, and k is equals to 2 over here, we will see that we will have z um, delta 2, z minus 2, right? So that when, when k is equals to 2, we have a spike of 1, right? So 1 times z minus 2 is simply um, z minus 2 over here, and then the rest are all zeros. And therefore, we can also prove that um, in such of a case that happens, z minus 2 is this one over here, okay? It's just simply 1 times z minus 2, which is a shifting of 1 with 2 time step. That's just the meaning of it. And they are actually the same, same of a magnitude. Or just that in terms of a, a way to express things. Just to tell you that they are actually delay in it. Because if you still remember, this term actually tells you that there's a delay of 2. Alright? If you have a delay of m, in this case if it's k minus m, then you have a delay of m. And that's all this is, is all about. Alright, but all the way the magnitude is always the one. Just that in terms of the representation and things like that is is kind of make things uh, confusing. Alright, I hope that I can actually um, make the confusion slightly less confusing. I don't know whether do I do it or not. But anyway, I'll see you in the next video for the um, input for the um, step input. Alright, step input for our Z transform. And I'll see you there.